lecture series of Network Circuit Analysis. I am Mr. Nagraj DC. In the last class, we have discussed about the importance of transient analysis and one mathematical tool, how we can uh, analyze the transients in the system is by using differential equations. Okay, so, in the last class, uh, in the last lecture, we have discussed about solution of a homogeneous differential equation where we have found out the general solution and a particular solution by uh, calculating the value of k at initial condition. So today in this lecture we will be looking into the solution to the non-homogeneous equation uh, that is applied to the electrical system. So consider a non-homogeneous equation okay, di of t by dt plus pi of t equals to v of t. Okay, where p is a constant and v of t is a forcing function. So I can write here p is a constant and v of t is a forcing function. So in the previous class it was discussed that what a you know, non-homogeneous and homogeneous equation uh, differ from. A homogeneous equation comes with a zero forcing function or a source free system. We apply homogeneous equation analysis for source free system and here there is a source or a forcing function v of t applied to the system. Okay. So uh, let us take this as equation 1. To this equation 1 I do certain alteration. Okay. I multiply an integrating factor to the system okay, uh, to this equation multiply uh, an integrating factor integrating factor e to the power pt on both sides e to the power pt on both sides so when I multiply it with on uh, to the equation 1 on both sides of equation 1 now I will multiply each term of LHS and RHS with a factor e to the power pt di of t by dt plus p e to the power pt i of t equals to e to the power pt v of t. Now the question here is why I have to multiply this integrating factor? It is simple. Many a times in mathematical analysis we have seen, we need to take uh, many times certain steps to um, simplify the equation or to get the equation in a convertible form. Okay? In a convertible form. And I am multiplying e to the power pt other, rather than any other function because no doubt this is a first order differential equation. This first order differential equation, the solution of first order differential equation will be obtained by integrating it or if there is a first order integral equation then I get by differentiating it. Okay. So exponential function what I think is, what I feel is exponential function is one such a function which will not change its nature when differentiated or integrated. So I feel that is the reason why I am taking an exponential function as an integrating factor to be multiplied on both sides of the equation. Still the equation remains balanced. When I observe the LHS of the equation, when I observe LHS of the equation, it is appearing like the differentiation of a product. Like uh, I take this as equation 2. Okay, So I can say that LHS of equation 2 is of form is of form okay it is like x dy plus y dx equals to and this gives us d of x into okay, d of x into y so i can write this lhs of equation as differentiation of two products so what are the products it is i of t and e to the power pt. It is i of t and e to the power pt. So therefore, I can write, therefore, LHS of equation 2 can be written as 
can be written as d by dt of i of t e to the power p t equals to RHS will remain same e to the power p t v of t e to the power p t v of t so this is the reason why I multiplied integrating factor so that I can have a converted equation converted expression in mathematical representation so I can now to get the solution you take this as equation 3 it is simple to get the solution because I want solution in the sense I want the expression for i of t so here by integrating equation on both the sides I can get an expression for i of t so to find the solution to find solution of equation 3 integrate equation 3 on both sides so whenever I want to take differentiation integration multiplication division any mathematical uh, um, operation that I am applying should be applied on both the sides of the equation okay, so that the balance will not be altered so with this what I get is integration of differentiation is i of t into e to the power pt equals to integration of e to the power pt v of t dt integration of e to the power pt dt okay, plus k because always we will get integration constant so now I can take i of t as equals to e to the power minus pt integration e to the power pt v of t dt plus e to the power minus pt into, into k. So this is the solution for a non-homogeneous equation. Okay? So this is the solution for a non-homogeneous equation. Non-homogeneous equation. We got the solution. Now we should understand the solution. That is important. Getting solution in mathematics is not a uh, enough task. When I get any solution, which I should be able to understand what the solution is speaking me, speaking to me. Okay? All equations, what we derive, what we apply, what we analyze, speak something to us about the system that we are analyzing in hand. Okay? So these are not the mere mathematical operations <coughs> that we are... Uh, uh, using to get some mathematical result. So all these mathematical results what we get, all these mathematical analysis that we are applying okay, are telling us something. So we should be in a position to understand what the equations are speaking to us. Okay, now it says there are two parts of the solution here. You can observe this equation is having two parts. Okay. I have two parts of the equation term 1 and second, uh, term 2 so first term indicates a particular integral the first term of the solution integrates solution indicates a particular integral and the second term indicates complementary function it is a complementary function so what we have to observe here is the particular integral doesn't carry the integration constant or arbitrary constant k. In this particular integral, k is not present. And in complementary function, forcing function is not present. Okay. Forcing function is not present in complementary function. And there is no arbitrary constant present in the particular integral. So, what I can represent the solution as is i of t is equals to I can write i of t pi plus i of t cf i of t pi plus i of t cf so it is the total solution of the non-homogeneous equation always comes with a particular integral and a complementary function okay so here I can write a complementary function sorry a particular integral i of t pi I can write it at 
write it as i of t s s okay so this indicates the particular integral gives us the steady state response of the system steady state response of the system steady state response of the system whereas the complementary function i of t cf this indicates the transient response of the system this indicates transient response of the system transient response of the system so what is transient response we already have seen that it is a state of the system before this response of the system reaches its stable value or steady value and steady state response is that response that exists till t tending infinity okay it exists till t tending infinity after the transients are completely vanished when the transients are completely vanished if i have to show the same uh, graph what i have we have seen so this is transient response this is steady state response so this steadiness of the system will exist till t tending infinity whereas this transient will exist only till the settling time of the system and observe why the complementary function is taken as a transient response here say complementary function is not depending upon the forcing function the forcing function is absent in the complementary function if the forcing function is absent then on what does this transient response or the complementary function depend upon the transient response or the complementary function of the system depend upon the nature of the system it depends upon the nature of the system okay so this k indicates a constant for defining or depicting the nature of the system okay so the transient response depends upon the nature of the system if then uh, if the system that is designed or developed is designed in such a way that the transients can be handled very well and the transients can be damped at a sooner time then we say that system is a good system okay these all things you will be studying in detail Uh, again in the control system course okay that there where you uh, will be defining the ratios that will decide the transient nature of the system okay so briefly when we go into the further topics of the same course we will be again discussing how the transients are varied depending upon the variation in the system components Okay. Ultimately, when I am varying electrical system means it will be R, L, and C. Okay, so how the variation in these elements, passive elements, will lead to the variation in the transient response, we shall see in the coming lectures. Okay, but for now you can remember that this is a homogeneous equation, non-homogeneous equation that I have considered. Okay, to find the solution, and like we have discussed in the previous uh, topic that. non homogeneous equations are used where there is a forcing function present in the system or in a simple understanding i can say where there is a source present in the system okay so i have analyzed and we found a solution for this non homogeneous equation so this indicates the solution of a non homogeneous equation and we understood solution in its two parts that one is a particular integral one is a complementary function Okay, I told about complementary function that it depends upon the nature of the system. But what about particular integral? Now particular integral depends upon the forcing function. So it means that the particular integral is a steady state response of the system, which solely depending upon or which directly depending upon the input. So depending upon the input, I get the output. 
So, the response of the system represented by a particular integral term is that response of the system which is totally depending upon the excitation. Okay? So, therefore, there are two ways, there are two parts of the solution where one part of the solution depends upon the excitation, other part of the solution depends upon the nature of the system. This is the solution of non-homogeneous equation. So, the next we will be we look into the initial conditions. So next part what we will uh, uh, try to look into is initial conditions. So what initial conditions are? Okay. So the initial conditions as the name indicates the condition of the system or a circuit at the initial point of time. Now the question arises what is initial point of time? So first we should understand what is initial point and what is final point. We generally don't go for final point of operation but we think of initial condition or initial point of time. Now I will take a very simple series circuit. A simple series circuit or let me not uh, uh, define what it is. I take some circuit connected with a source. Okay. Let this be V. Let this be load. Let this be switches. I will take one more circuit Let this be V, there is a switch S and this is load. So there are two circuits considered, one with the switch S open. Now let me take just to differentiate, let this be S1 and let this be S2. Let this be V1 and let this be V2. Let this be load 1 and let this be load 2. Just for the sake of differentiation. There is no analytical significance. Now. There are two systems, there are two circuits which are representing two different systems. We can observe, when I see this circuit, initially the switch is open. When I see this circuit, initially the switch is closed. Now, what possible operations I can do in these two circuits is, here I can close the switch, here I can open the switch. What I can do with these two circuits is, I can close the switch in the circuit 1. I can open the switch in circuit 2. If I want to change the state of operation. If I want to change the state of operation of any system, then in electrical system, what we do? We either turn on the supply or turn off the supply. Or, if the switch is closed, I will open it. If the switch is open, I will close it. So, a state of the system is changed by changing the switch position. And this switch can be a mechanical switch or can be a soft switch. What soft switch is? Soft switch is a semiconductor switch. Okay. So, uh, all of us we have seen in electronic fundamental of uh, electronics or in the analog electronic circuits that a transistor can be operated as a switch, a diode can be operated as a switch, okay, MOSFET can be operated as a switch, okay, there are various electronic devices which are, which can be operated as a switch, okay. So, I am not going to decide what kind of switch this S1 and S2 are, I just say these are switches. So, by operating these switches, the state of the circuit changes and if, or if I want to uh, get the change in the state of the circuit, I want to operate the switch S1 and S2. So, now, by changing switch S1 and S2, the position of switch S1 and S2, the state of the uh, circuit is changing and the state of the circuit or the system, when the switch is operated, when the switch is operated is called initial condition of the system. So it means that the state of the system, say suppose in circuit 1, the state of the system in circuit 1 at the time of closure of the switch S1, whatever the state of the circuit I have, whether it, there may be some voltages at some nodes, there may be some currents in some branches, this condition is known as initial condition. And the state of the circuit for second one, uh, S2, 
at the time when I am opening the switch S2 is called the initial condition of this system. Now why it is important for me to know the initial conditions? Because we have two elements in the electrical system that can store the energies. A capacitor will store the energy in the form of a static electric field and a inductor will store the energy in the form of a magnetic field, electromagnetic field. And we know that when the energy storage elements are present in the system, the changes that are happening in the system may not be instantaneous. Or, suppose I have a capacitor. Suppose I have a capacitor here. I connect a capacitor here. At the time of switch S1 closing, there may be some voltage across this capacitor. I don't know what has happened before the switch S1 is closed. When the switch S1 is open, there may be some prevailing conditions in the system. Suppose I, I have one more say capacitor here or inductor here. When I want to open the switch S2, there may be some current, magnetizing current present in the inductor. So these conditions which are existing at the time of change of state are called initial conditions. Now why these are called initial conditions? Because I consider the time instant when I operate the switch as the initial point of time t equals to 0. Okay. So initial condition is what? Okay. Initial condition is nothing but state of system state of system when when a switch is operated at t equals to 0 at t equals to 0 so always I consider t equals to 0 is the time instant when I operate the switch okay so this is the initial time this is initial time this is one point second point what we need to observe here is what is the time of operation of the switch now I operate switch okay? so I operate this switch from open to close or close to open condition now what is the time of operation of the switch I assume the time taken to operate the switch is always zero it is happening instantaneously so assume that time to operate or time taken to operate switch is zero is zero that is switch operating time is zero the switch operates in zero time okay that is switch operates in zero time so the time of operation of switch is zero so switch is not taking any time to operate if i consider circuit one i will redraw the circuit one here down Let this be switch yes. Okay. Now let this be voltage, say V volts. If I want to change the state of this system, I have to operate the switch that I have to make the switch from open position to closed. T equals to zero. This always we mention the instant at which the switch is operating is t equals to 0. We have declared that the switch operating time is 0. Switch operates in 0 time. It means switch operates instantaneously then voltage will rise from 0 to V volts instantaneously. Let us assume. Let me take this as uh, instead of V volts I will take this as say um, some Vx volts. See, some x volts. At t equals to 0, at t equals to 0, the switch operates. At t equals to 0, the switch operates from open to close condition. Then the voltage will rise from 0 to x volts and it will remain as it is. The voltage will rise 0 to x volts and it will remain at x volts. Now, here we consider two time instances. Okay? Here we consider two time instances 
to analyze the initial condition of the system that a time instant just before the closing of the switch and a time instant just after the closing of the switch. Now you may ask the question that it is already been told that the switch operates in zero time then how can be two instances for the operation of the switch. Practically though we say or ideally though we say that the switch operating time is zero but to understand the initial condition of the system we assume or we consider two time instances. Okay, So one time instant just before the switch is closed. Okay, So here it is t equals to zero. At t equals to zero the instant of the time which is just before the switch is closed. I represent this time instant as t equals to 0 minus. And a time instant just after the switch is closed. I represent it as t equals to 0 plus. Here plus and minus doesn't have any mathematical or directional significance. It is just to understand the notation. It is just to understand the difference in the time instants which represent the instant just before the switch is operated and the instant just after the switch is operated. So here I can say so t equals to 0 minus okay, it is the time instant time instant just before switch is operated. It applies whether the switch is operated from close to open position or open to close position. Okay. And t equals to 0 plus that is the time instant time instant just after or immediately after the switch is closed. Immediately after switch is closed. Now why I need to consider this way is with this notation I will be getting to know what is the state of the system in its history period? History period here indicates the instant or the time period or the time um, span all the time before the switch is operated. It means all the time for t less than 0 minus. It is the history period. I can say here for t less than or equals to 0 minus is called history period of system. It means that it is the previous state of the system that was existing before the operating of the switch. Okay, And for t greater than or equals to 0 plus for t greater than or equals to 0 plus okay, this is the period of the system when the state of the system is changed. Okay, It is time after state of system is changed. It is the time after state of system is changed. Then what is initial condition? So initial condition is that instant of time which exists at t equal to 0 minus and t equal to 0 plus. Okay, So what is initial condition? Okay. So initial condition is state of system at p equals to 0 minus. So what state of the system is existing just before the closing of the switch is called initial condition of the system. Is called initial condition of the system. Okay. So when the switch is operated for p equals to 0 plus and beyond. Okay, What is the state of the system? Whether the state of the system at t equal to 0 minus is influencing the operation of the system after the switch is closed. Okay, Or it is not influencing is the part of study what we have to do. So whenever I want to find the solution of any system with respect to time. okay, 
then I will be knowing, I want to know what is the condition of the system before the state of the system has changed. If there are certain prevailing conditions at initial point of time or we call it as initial uh, conditions, how these initial conditions are influencing the, uh, the output or the operation of the system after the switch is operated. Okay? So the initial conditions can be given as if it is a current then I can write I equal to 0 minus oh sorry I of 0 minus V of 0 minus okay these are all uh, initial conditions so these are all initial conditions just before switch is operated just before switch is operated and I of 0 plus V of 0 plus okay so these are the voltages and currents after the switch is operated after the switch is operated. So this is all about initial conditions. How to consider uh, initial condition in a system. Okay. So we will see a simple passive element. Will initial condition exist in a resistor? Let me take a simple resistor R. Let the current is I let the current is I in the resistor then when the current I flows through this resistor R there will be a voltage drop across this resistor which can be given as VR which can be given as VR okay now if I write the expression for VR equals to I into Okay, I into R. Now we know that resistor is not an energy storage element. Resistor will not store any energy. Resistor will not store any energy. Okay. So here, whatever the current flows in the resistor R, if there is a change in the current flowing in resistor R, then there will be instantaneous change in the voltage across R. So here, the current through resistor and the voltage across resistor simultaneously change. They change instantaneously. So the current in resistor and the voltage in a resistor, they change instantaneously. Okay? Because the current in this resistor is independent of time and as the current is changing instantaneously with respect to time, the voltage across resistor is also changing instantaneously. Therefore, the initial conditions in the resistors are generally absent. It means that the initial condition in the resistor, I can say, are zero. Generally, we don't get initial condition in the resistor in a system where the element is alone a resistor. Okay. So here I can say, so, so V R and I. So these are how linear relationship. These have linear relationship. These have linear relationship. And here current changes instantaneously. Current changes instantaneously with respect to voltage. With respect to voltage. Why? Because resistor will not store energy. As resistor does not store energy. It just dissipates. Now go back to the fundamentals of AC circuits that you studied in fundamentals of electrical engineering or basic electrical engineering. Okay, What you decided there when you applied a AC alternating current source to a register through mathematical analysis you declared there or you concluded there the current and voltage change their values simultaneously hence you declared there that current in register is always in phase with its voltage current in register is always in phase with it with its voltage why the current in register is in phase with the voltage because of this reason 
with instantaneous change in with change in voltage there is instantaneous change in current so that is what we have written here in this statement current changes instantaneously with respect to voltage what does it mean current is in phase with voltage if the phase of the current changes sorry if the phase of the voltage changes phase of the current will also change simultaneously that is the reason why the current is in phase with the voltage in a resistor okay that is that is for ac current remains in phase with voltage so this is from here that it is been observed so it is true that whenever the voltage across a resistor changes current changes instantaneously so that i conclude that whenever there is a change in the phase change in the phase of the current or change in the phase of the voltage across resistor there is change in the phase of current okay and if if there is change in the phase of the current then there is a change in the phase of voltage across resistor both are true okay if the applied voltage phase changes current flowing in the resistor's phase will also change simultaneously if i am considering a drop across a resistor then if the change in the phase of the current occurs then there is a change in the phase of the drop will occur simultaneously so in any case it is evident that current and voltage are in phase in resistor for an alternating current system okay so this is about the initial condition in a resistor so initial condition in the resistor are absent okay initial condition in resistor are absent it means that the things are changing instantaneously the things are changing instantaneously so before the application of voltage there cannot be current in a resistor because current will flow in resistor only when there is applied voltage okay so with this we all for the day for today's session we will end in next session we will be looking into what are the initial conditions in an inductor and in a capacitor then we will go to analyze the systems which uh, having inductance and capacitance as elements and what are the transient and steady state responses of such systems with application of dc source and with application of ac source later okay so thank you for the day